Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath. And in this video, it's the triumphant return of the thrift store series. It's also a Jurassic deck video. It's been months since we've done a thrift store video or a Jurassic deck video. Hopefully I will not burst into flames during this video. It's the dead of summer. Uh, you can hear the air conditioner noises. You can hear the dinosaurs, the pterodactyls. What are those little guys, those little bitty dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, the lost world that are on that island? They're like chickens. They're real. You can hear those. You can hear those in the distance. Um, guys, the thrift stores, uh, it's been so long. It's not that I forgot about it. It's just one of those things, especially with all the, the current health crises going on. Uh, thrift stores were, one, they weren't even open. And when they did open back up, it actually took a long time for stuff to start showing up again. What I'm going to show you here, I've got an out of print DVD. We've got some movies. I've got a ton of paperback books here. If you're into the men's uh, paperback fiction, like the men's fiction paperbacks, this is the thrift store video for you. I've got a lot of stuff here, uh, but this is the culmination of like 10 thrift store visits. This is not one visit. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, we also have this handy dandy stand here, so I don't have to sit there and hold things up. How does that work? Yes. Guys, airheads. Uh, this is out of print. I do not think that this is currently in print. And it's weird because you can still find some stock. Like it's not super obscure because listen, there are probably a million of these things out there. But um, it's not a movie that I own anymore. I bought it on VHS. I bought this movie on DVD when it came out on DVD. And it's one of those movies that like, I like it, but I don't love it. But then you factor in the rarity and the scarcity and like, oh, so if I don't have airheads, I might not get to see this movie again because of, I mean, listen, with the, with the world, the way that it, we see with what's happening with streaming services, like I don't need to talk to you guys about streaming services, right? Like those are not reliable as archives for our pop culture entertainment. So uh, own the stuff that you love, or in this case, own the stuff that you like and want to watch again and don't know when you might be able to do so again. That's why I picked this up. Listen, it was... It was a dollar fifty. Hopefully that shows up for you guys. It was a dollar and fifty cents. Uh, orange sale. Uh, this was not any further discounted. But some of the stuff that I'm about to show you guys was. By the way, this is in flawless condition. Uh, it doesn't look like it was ever touched. Again, I don't think it's a great movie, but I like it, and I, I even more like the idea of having access to this movie <laughs> uh, on my own terms. Uh, Boomtown. This is a movie. I'm not. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not familiar with this movie at all. Let's do that right there. Ooh, production. Um, Boomtown. This is a classic. It's an MGM movie distributed by Warner Brothers. It's got Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, Claudette Colbert. Uh, Hedy Lamar, and it was directed by Jack Conway. What, what is the year on this? 1940. So I'm not familiar with this film, but that cast is incredible, and now I will be. And this was a dollar fifty, and it was 50% off because it's a great. That's what. I, that's the downside of the of the stand. You introduce a stand, the stand has to topple at least once. Bug on my finger. Um, Dollar fifty gray tag sale, an additional fifty percent off. So this was seventy five cents. So uh, that was very very cool. Again, this one this one as well, um, virtually untouched. Yeah, this stand is already making problems for me. What <laughs> do I regret it? I'm not sure. This may end up in the in the Jurassic yard. Uh, we've got a few more DVDs. Uh, these come from a thrift store. Here, you know what, here's a couple of notes since we're already into this. Um, whoop, as I'm bumping the camera. Uh, I have cleaned everything that's here with soap and water, but I've left these price tags on so that you guys could see what we're dealing with. And it just got bit by an ant. Maybe the Jurassic deck was a bad idea for this video. Um, I've cleaned everything that's here and uh, I've left the stickers on so that you guys can kind of see what the deals are themselves. Although this, this $2.99 sticker is um this was not 2.99 this was two dollars this comes from one of my thrift stores that's decided to get cute uh, a lot of this stuff actually comes from thrift stores that are not my regular thrift stores like i've been doing a lot of i had to take brie to the dentist okay so brie went to the dentist and i was like you know what i'm gonna go there's a thrift store over here i'm gonna go check this out it's a t-rex hey hey t-rex uh so i go to this thrift store and that's a story because i'm going to tell you more about that when we get to the records but um my local my my hometown salvation army has gotten real cute with prices and i actually made like a rant video just for patreon and um 
these price tags are one of the things that like they some of these have price tags dvds have price tags up to six and seven dollars i'm like guys it's not 2005 these need to be a dollar fifty for the other ones 2.99 to six to seven dollars like that's that's a manager who does not know what's going on in the current I, I suspect they're probably trying to make up for lost revenue due to all the closures and everything but i don't know that that's the way to do it uh, i would think you would want to clear that especially since it's all donated inventory anyway right there's no profit margin it's all profit so i would think you'd want to push as much of that through um, listen, when I had to go up there to make a donation and the line was out of the parking lot, so the stuff is there, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, two bucks for your good man, uh, you're a good sport, Charlie Brown. This also has, uh, you're the greatest Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, you're the greatest. I have a lot of these peanuts DVDs. Uh, I know there's been some box sets. I don't have any of the box sets, but I do grab these every time I get a chance. And these are fairly cheap. You can find these for $5 to $10, even new in like a Walmart. But $2, I had to grab this one. So now that just adds to the, to the peanuts collection. Also from the same cute thrift store, this still sealed Elvis DVD of Live a Little, Love a Little. Live a Little, Love a Little. <laughs> it is still in its original. Oh, it doesn't have a security tag. Anyway, it's still sealed. You guys can see the plastic wrap on that, right? Two ninety nine. It was two bucks. I would not have paid. I already own these. I have like every Elvis movie and every uh, and like past editions and stuff. But you give me a sealed Elvis DVD, the Elvis collector in me. What am I to some mama? Give me a sealed Elvis DVD, baby. I'm gonna pick it up every single time. Uh, this may be a good opportunity to pimp our video where we went to Tupelo to the birthplace of Elvis. It's one of my favorite videos, and it's one of the least watched. I'm gonna link to that right there. I love that video. We actually, there's so much production. I wrote the music for the video. Like there's a lot of Heath in that Elvis video. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, last thrift store DVD selection. Uh, Batman and Robin, this is the serial. The, the Columbia, is it Columbia? Uh, it's Sony, yeah. Sony distributing Columbia. Um, it is a, uh, this is the sequel. You know, we do so much serials coverage here at Serial at Midnight. Uh, this is the sequel to the Batman serial from the 40s. I want to say this is maybe 46, 48, um, 49. Okay. This is the sequel. And this has been reissued on a two-disc set. I think it's a two-disc set from Mill Creek Entertainment. One disc has the original Batman serial. One of them has Batman and Robin. But this is the, effort, the first pressing of this from Columbia, not Mill Creek. And it puts... Uh, it's two discs, so it has more room to breathe, which will mean less compression. I have the Mill Creek version. That's what I was going to use to cover that for cereals at midnight, but now I have this, which is actually uh, a really good thing. So I have Verata. Respect my Verata. Uh, records, guys. Let's talk about some records. Uh, the first one of these is just kind of a, this is an odds and ends thing. <laughs> it's Olivia Newton-John. Physical. It's just, it's just called physical. I was going to say, let's get physical. It's physical. All you Olivia Newton-John fans out there, eat your heart out. Um, it's so rare to see things like this that still have... I haven't cleaned this yet, and it's honestly, it's not in great shape. Uh, it's got like a... I don't know if it's got a scratch right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Anyway, uh, it was like... I think it was a dollar. But finding these in the original sleeves is kind of rare. Like, I don't know why that is, but it's. It, I find it to be far harder to find... 45s in their original sleeves. I don't know if that's because, like, did guys who, hey, peeps, people who were buying 45s in the 70s and the 80s, did you just throw the jacket away? I'm like, what's up with that? I mean, so many people, like, okay, one of my wife's friend's mothers, who's kind of like extended family for us, gave me her 45 collection. Hundreds of 45s. Not a sleeve in the one of them, you guys. It's just stacked, and they're all scratched, and they're all scuffed because of that. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I, I love having them, but, okay. Next, um, this is, so I got six records from a thrift store that I had. It's the one that I went to, to the dentist. I dropped Brie off at the dentist and then I went on to the, um, to the thrift store. And I, a lady and I walked in at the same time. I went to the DVDs and the movies and she went to the records and lo and behold, she hit jackpot. And so I'm like, I'm not finding anything on the DVDs, right? And I look over and she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh because we're in the south that's what, oh my gosh and i go over there and it's just like so much stuff so bob dylan um tons of like high profile 
like Doobie Brothers, Eric Clapton, like really good stuff, like classic rock, like stuff that I'd be interested in. Uh, and so what I got was her cast off. So it was her rejects. It's the stuff that she didn't want or that her husband already had. So uh, I got the Go-Go's first album. Listen, I like the Go-Go's a lot. I just don't, I don't know a whole lot about the Go-Go's. I know the hits, um, but I don't know a whole lot of, um, I don't know album tracks or anything like that. I don't think I have any Go-Go's besides this album. I think this is their first album. Okay, that's two. That's two times I've knocked this over. Starting to, starting to regret it. Here's the back of the um, the back of the jacket. Here's Jane Wideland up here. Love Jane Wideland. Who, you guys, if you don't know the Go-Go's, but you know Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, she was Joan of Arc in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Multi-talented. She can sing. She can act. Can she dance? Probably so. Um, she can do S&M shows, because she's really into S&M, apparently. She was on the, what was one of, the, it was one of those, like, you're locked in this house for a week reality shows i can't remember which one um one of those mtv shows maybe with tammy faye baker i'm probably getting multiple seasons confused anyway they also had jose feliciano uh what is this album uh and the feelings good by jose feliciano now isn't jose feliciano the fella that did feliz navidad is that Fel jose feliciano however movie fans probably know Jose Feliciano better if you like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I think most of us do. Uh, the cover of Mama, The Mamas and the Papas, California Dreamin', that appears in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that's Jose Feliciano. We've actually talked about him in a previous, I think maybe we didn't, that may have been a, <laughs> may have been a Patreon exclusive video. I've talked about him somewhere in a record haul video. Uh, I grabbed the Cannonball Adderley Quintet. Now, I don't know, this is music, you all. I wish that it was music, y'all. But uh, it's music, you all. And I, I haven't listened to this yet. Um, but I'm excited about it. I think it's jazz. I think it's like a jazz fusion sort of a thing. Uh, so that was a good, did I show you the back? That was a good score. Uh, by the way, these were 50 cents. So it's, you're taking a gamble on some stuff for 50 cents. But I, I know what I like, you know. I'm not, I don't feel too, I don't think I shot too far in the dark on any of this stuff. Um, the last two I was kind of excited about. Oh, there's one more. Uh, Foreigner. Foreigner's first album, which I have Foreigner's, I think it's like the first five or six on CD. I have up until Lou Graham left. And I may even have the one after that. Anyway, um, I have a lot of Foreigner on CD. I don't love Foreigner, but I like Foreigner. And sometimes you just get in the mood for some, some cold as ice or... As, Star Rider is the big one on here. If you guys aren't familiar, if you're familiar with Foreigner from the hits, like feels like the first time, Cold as Ice. Um, uh, yeah, I would I would go with Star Rider because that's like one of those ambitious, progressive anthem songs. In fact, if you if you like Star Rider, I would say check out the live version. It's on YouTube. The live version that they did. Uh, it was in the mid two thousands. There, it's even better live and it's like 10 minutes long or something like that also I believe this is the second Foreigner album um, this is the uh, Double Vision so this of course the song Double Vision which I now associate I associate so many of these classic rock songs now with advertising campaigns wasn't Double Vision used in a Burger King commercial they, I, when these guys license out their music when these, when these fellows when these musicians <laughs> license out their music for commercials and the like I, I don't know if they're thinking about the ramifications on their music you know what I mean because um, now I like I associate Led Zeppelin with like rock and roll music the Led Zeppelin song I associate that with Cadillac <laughs> advertising really works on me I remember jingles from when I was like two years old like I'm a big jingle fan I'm because I'm so musically interested I guess uh, anyway this one's the one that has double vision uh, hot-blooded uh, yeah, those are the those are the big ones. I think we've got one more. Yeah, one more from that thrift store. Also 50 cents. Boz Skaggs, Down Two, Then Left. This was the follow-up to his big breakthrough album that had Lido Shuffle on it and um, uh, Low Down on it. Uh, this I believe this is the one that came out immediately thereafter. And I don't have this. I've kind of gotten into Boz Skaggs in the last three months or so. And when I say gotten into Boz Skaggs, I have one album and now I have two. But um, he's just, you know, it's just very cool. It's a fusion kind of a thing between uh, like that real, it, it's, a, it's 
got one foot in older school rock. It's got one foot in like jazz. It's got, it's it's an interesting thing. It's it's very, very unique. You know when it's yacht rock, it, it gets labeled as yacht rock. And I don't know if that's pejorative or not. But last but not least, record wise, I grabbed this um, this Hawaiian record. You guys know I love exotica music and like just interesting, kitschy mid-century music and i'm a big fan of this sort of thing we've talked about this a lot in thrift store videos because thrift stores bumping the bumping the table thrift stores are just lousy with hawaiian records because it was such a movement you know in the in the 50s and in the 60s this stuff was everywhere and some of it's good some of it's not i like the weirder more esoteric very far out there stuff and that kind of seems like what this is going to be again uh, as i as i'm making this video i've had this for less than a day i bought this yesterday afternoon and i'm recording this video in the morning so i haven't even cleaned the disc itself yet just the just the outer jacket but it's hawaiian music on organ okay so that was kind of the thing i was like oh yeah hawaiian magic ken griffin at the organ so we're gonna see we're gonna see how it sounds and this was uh this was a dollar this was from a different thrift store and this was a dollar so 50 cents for the other ones and a dollar for that one i feel i feel pretty good about that uh also at the thrift store that i went to yesterday i got steve perry's greatest hits oh that's not showing up steve perry's greatest hits i don't own any steve perry solo i have a lot of journey i have most of journey's stuff but i don't have any solo steve perry so this gives me oh sherry um <clears throat> i mean that's the one that i know <laughs> is is oh sherry uh i'm tempted to sing it but youtube is so particular these days about like you sang the song and now we're going to monetize you. all your monetization money goes in our pockets like it's just the whole politics of youtube have changed so drastically so i'm not going to sing it uh it actually has it's like someone's name is on the back of here it was holly shefflin's cds holly shefflin if you're out there and you're watching this video somehow i don't know why you would be but if you're out there Thanks for donating your CD because now I have, now I have Steve Perry's GH, his greatest hits, uh, and this is, <laughs> you guys, Hootie and the Blowfish. So this is not for me. This is for Bree. Bree actually really loves. She's you know, she and I both kind of came of of teen years in the 90s, in the early 90s, you know. So she has more nostalgia for stuff like this, and lately when Hootie and the Blowfish comes on and like the grocery store or something she's like oh i love this song i wish we had this song but not enough to like pay 9.99 on itunes it's kind of just like a nostalgia thing and she didn't have this cd she's got a lot of 90s music she didn't have this and so i found this yesterday for um a dollar so i grabbed this for her and it looks like it's never been touched that's a you know insert your joke here i think that's an easy setup for a joke it's a hooting the blowfish cd that's never been touched um Moving into some paperbacks, and then we're going to wrap it up. This was, I got these four paperbacks from a thrift store that I'd never been to before. Uh, I, had to, I ended up in this city that's you know, it's about half an hour from where I live. And I was like, you know, I'm going to hit the thrift store scene. And holy crow, you, you, I just realized there's more stuff that I got from this thrift store that is not reflected in this hall. Where is that stuff? You know what, I'll just tell you about it since I don't know where it is. It's probably sitting on the kitchen table and I didn't clean it, so it's not gonna show up here. But in a past thrift, thrift store video, I got Boston Legal, you know, the uh, it's a lawyer show from the 2000s. It had William Shatner and uh, James Spader. It had James Spader as a, as a lawyer before the blacklist. Lizzie, I was a lawyer. Anyway, I found the first season of that. I like that show, but I didn't own it. I found the first season of that at a thrift store a, thrift store a few months back for $4, which I thought was fair. It was a good deal. Well, I found seasons two, three, and four at the at a thrift store just a few days ago, and it was they were $2.98, and they were 30% off of that. So they were just a touch over $2 for each season. So six bucks for three seasons of Boston Legal. It was a great deal, but I don't have them here to show you. Just take my word for it. Um, this this bookstore this was not even a bookstore it was like a it was a thrift store that had they like mostly did hardware stuff but they had books on the front like out in, out in the front so i found these uh battlestar galactica novel number 12. this is um die chameleon it's got a dollar price tag on it the war games novelization a dollar it's got a dollar on it uh, Fire Drake. This is an old fantasy novel from the 80s. 
Fire Drake, The Dragon Realm. I'm not familiar with either of these series. They're, listen, this was the golden age of uh, of fantasy fiction. You know, you have this, the R.A. Salvatore, the um, the, uh, the who's uh, oh geez, the the cat's name is failing me. The guy that uh, the big okay. <laughs> But Sword of Shannara, the, the Sword of Shannara, we've talked so many, we've talked about his books in the Thrift Store videos. This was the era of that, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragon Lance, so many of these series. I'm not familiar with this one, but it was uh, a good price. And frankly, I really like the cover. And sometimes the, the pulp cover is enough to sell me on a book. Uh, this one as well, The Rainbow Sword, which is part of a series, Adrian uh, Martin Barnes. Now, this is part of a series that, have you guys read this series and do you recommend it? The Fire Sword, the Crystal Sword, the Rainbow Sword, this is the Rainbow Sword, and then the Sea Sword. So there's at least four books in this swords cycle. Anyway, these were a dollar each. Did you guys get a good look at this cover? These were a dollar each, but I went inside and there was no one at the checkout, like no one working the checkout. So I just stood there for like three to five minutes. And when the guy came up to take care of me, he was like, I'm sorry you had to wait uh, a dollar each. You know what? Just give me two bucks for all of them. So I got them for half price. I got them for 50 cents each, which was, it was a score. That was a, that was a good deal for me. Um, the rest of these come from, uh, all the, they all come from one thrift store. And there was a lot of really cool stuff. I'm going to show you guys some footage probably. Uh, over this of like some of the horror novels and stuff that I, I appreciate the covers for but I just know like I'm not going to read these there's a lot of like animal horror like dog wild dog horror and cat horror and insect horror and that's cool I appreciate the covers but I don't need them I don't need to own them um, I don't buy everything that I see at thrift stores you know I, I don't like I, if I appreciate it sometimes you just take a photo of it or it's some video of it but this came from that thrift store and the cover was so compelling see I'm telling you guys the cover can sell a book the cover for this was so compelling. The Quick by Burt Cole. Is that showing up for you guys? This cover, man, look at this dude. He's got the yin yang on his, this yin yang patch on his sleeve. The hair, the gun. I was like, what is this book? It's science fiction. Um, as fierce a, a military science fiction novel as I've ever read. Basically, this character's name is Shaman. It's like a post apocalyptic future. America's dying violently. A brutal and borderless civil war rages between the neo-fascist controlling order and the Marxist terrorist people's freedom movement. In this stalemated orgy of death and chaos, the call goes out for a savior to destroy and tip the scales. And Shaman answers. And this is Shaman. I'm like, this sounds amazing. It's also like ripped from the headlines. <laughs> like, not to get political, but like, there's so many of this stuff. Like, oh, America's like angry at each other. Like, Two sides of America at war, like, oh, what, what, what is, how topical. So this guy, if maybe, maybe we just need Shaman to come save us, right? Also, uh, I grabbed another Executioner novel. Hopefully you've seen Heath, link to your Executioner videos. There's, I think there's actually a playlist, a Paperback Paradise playlist. I'm going to link to you right here. All of our Executioner novels, uh, the Mac Bolan, the Executioner novels, I have the uh, this is in the 200s. This is 291. This is book number 291. And I have, I don't have a lot from the upper 200s. I have the entire first 100 Mac Bolan Executioner novels. I have quite a few between 100 and 200. You get past 200, I get real sporadic. Uh, and one of the reasons I have to always say this, one of the reasons that I have so many of these Executioner books, I've had wonderful luck with finding things, being in the right place at the right time, eBay lots, things like that. But Kyle, Kyle, if you see this video, I continue to be in your debt. I continue to have gratitude. He sent us all of the holes that we had in our executioner collection from one to 100. He sent me an email. He's like, which ones are you still looking for? And I was like, well, you know, I don't want you to spend too much time on it. And I sent him a list of what I still needed. He sent every one of those issues, one of every one of these books that was on that list. And Kyle, even all these months later, I still appreciate you so much. That was like incredible. And I'm still reading these too. Next is uh, more men's, like in the, in the vein of The Executioner. And these are series I'm not really familiar with. It's the SOBs. So there are four of these that I have. This is book number six. Uh, and this is um, Red Hammer Down. The SOBs slam head on into an enemy called Spetsnaz. <laughs> Spetsnaz. Uh, the gimmick behind these books is they are the soldiers of Barabbas. I think it's Barabbas. Yeah, and it's, you know, just... 
the 80s are just chock-a-block with these kinds of uh, ex-Vietnam veterans. Or you're not an ex-Vietnam veteran. You're an ex-Vietnam soldier or a Vietnam veteran. These v Vietnamese, you know, these guys who came back from Vietnam and have all these skills, and so they just bring the war home, or they continue to travel abroad. This, the 80s, just full of this stuff. So this is another one of those lines, very inspired by Rambo. You know, what was happening on screen in Rambo filtered down through the culture. I love to talk about these movies. You know, there's so many movies that fit into this. Um, let me do this. There's so many movies that fit into this sort of uh, subgenre. I love to talk about the, the Annihilators. We talked about that recently, The Devastator. Uh, I love these 80s movies that are very pulpy and just like the war comes home. And this is the book version of that. So this is the whole series. This is number six. Uh, this is number eight. What is this one called? Eye of the Fire. Great covers. Absolutely fantastic covers. Death Deal. SOBs number 15. And uh, this is the one that says it's the Soldiers of Barabbas. Great cover. Another great cover. Who, who has experience with this series? I've never, see, I, I've never seen this series before. Maybe I've seen it and it just went right over my head because at the time I just wasn't ready for it. I wasn't interested in it. But this is book number 17. It's the 17. Point blank. <clears throat> uh, and that's the last of those. And then there are three more, three more <laughs> from uh, another series. This is the Able Team series, which I'm also, I've heard of these. I've seen these actually in lots on eBay but they were going for more than I wanted to pay. So this is book number 17. Let me make sure I got these in order. Yeah, uh, there's apparently dozens of these. This is the first one that they had. This is book number 17, uh, and it is called Fire and Maneuver. Able Team Blisses into Columbia to Crush a Cocaine Cowboy. It's amazing, right? I love this artwork. I also love on the back, it says, Prosecution to the Max. Hey man, Prosecution to the Max, bro. Uh, what year is this? 1985. That fits. Uh, this comes courtesy of... It's got a, I used to hate these. These stamps and stickers and stuff. Now I love these because they give your... They have added life. You know, like they have history. You can tell where they've been. This comes from the book rack in uh, Carincro, Louisiana. And who knows if that place is even there anymore because goodness knows bookstores are closing left and right. But this is this was book 17. This is book 29. Death ride. Guys, let's take a death ride. Oh, geez. Thought I felt something crawling on me, which I wouldn't be surprised because we are on the Jurassic deck. We are almost done. Number 42, Dead Zone. Another great cover. Um, so that's these books. And again, if you have any experience with these novels, these series of novels, I would love to know what you think. I know they're not deep. I know that they're not... Um, you know, like super compelling fiction or anything like that, but for what they are for pulp that you read in like two or three days, I love this stuff. I love The Executioner, and these are getting into the 80s, which is when I came of age. You know, I grew up with Rambo, and I grew up with Chuck Norris and the Mission in, Missing in Action movies. Uh, last item from the whole thrift store haul, this is Life Goes to the Movies. This was $1, and it's a collection of all of Life magazine's movie coverage but here's the thing this was published in 1975 so everything in here is movies before 1975 and if you've been watching if you've seen our 1970s movie video where cinema dave and i talk about the movie here i'm going to pop this up if this will even stand up it's very heavy yeah there we go let me center i got a center now I just realized that these records are like directly in the frame. I'm sorry about that. Let me push those out. <laughs> Who cares, right? Um, if you've seen my conversation with Cinema Dave about movies of the 70s, you know that 1975 was a transitional year for Hollywood. And 1975 is the year that birthed the blockbuster. That's when movies went from being small, moderately financed affairs with a focus on actors and story and performance to being blockbusters with huge influxes of money on production and special effects and the talent. That's when Nicholson started getting like, he went from you know a few hundred thousand dollars to one million dollars per movie, 1.5 million dollars per movie. Everything changed in 1975. So this is really interesting that this book takes place, or it was published in 1975. And it's great, it has all the covers. It's mostly a photo book, but there is some text. 
Uh, and it's it's a wonderful look at that Buster Keaton it's divided into chapters too I'll just show you guys the chapters really quick so you can see and that would be the third and final time for the stand uh, the stars the build-up the movies the studio behind the scenes and it, it, each one of these things I believe it kind of goes chronologically oh man hold up wait 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 it's like Terrence and Philip hey Terrence time to pay so-and-so uh, Look, look at all those wonderful, we got Groucho, we got, is that Lon Chaney Sr.? Um, just so many great things. And it's, you know, these things are, how do I want to say what I'm trying to say without being too down on modern? We lose things. We lose, we have lost a lot of movie history because what sells can you know like history is written by the winners and we're talking about the blockbuster cycle and stuff and i feel like we have lost it's one of the goals of this channel right is to celebrate the the yesteryear we're kind of archaeologists we are retronauts that dig for the cool stuff from the past and show you how it has continued to influence the stuff of today and this book is a great resource for that because it's uh nothing but a celebration and it's not like dry dead text on a page it's vibrant pictures from the time that it came from so i don't know just my passion about this channel to you guys guys that's going to do it for this thrift store video video um i don't know when the next one's going to come because it's just really hit or miss one thing that i've learned since the world changed several months ago is that uh, thrift stores are more inconsistent now than ever before they were already really inconsistent but with everything that's going on i don't know i don't know when we're going to find more stuff but it's exciting it makes me feel here's one way to look at it so many people have been home for months cleaning out their cleaning out their houses and that's a great time to really capitalize on what other people consider trash to be our treasures the physical media collectors the retronauts who dig into the past for the treasures um this is a good time for that so hopefully continue we continue to find things like this popping up guys thank you so much for your time for making it to the end of this video i certainly do appreciate you uh, and i would love to know what you have to listen covered a lot of ground here what's your experience with this stuff have you read these books have you seen these movies have you seen boomtown what do you think about airheads um guys again thanks so much take care and until next time <laughs> i will catch you later